Hey guys, it's Alex C with TFP TV. Today on TFP TV, I'm going to talk about five firearms that I regret buying. For whatever reason, at the time of purchase, I thought acquiring these would be a good idea, but some factor later on down the road led to a severe case of buyer's remorse. So let's have a look. First is the Smith & Wesson 61. This is a 61-3, which means it has an aluminum frame, and these were made for only about three years perhaps for good reason. These little 22 caliber semi-automatics were called escorts and hold five rounds in the magazine. First off, 22 out of a gun with such a short barrel isn't exactly ballistically ideal, but at least it meets the important criteria of is a gun. That said, the 61s are horribly unreliable guns and I don't think I've ever gotten through an entire magazine, even when using CCI or other premium ammo. I saw this gun for a low price in a small, rural gun shop and recognized it as the gun that Robert De Niro used in Taxi Driver, which is a great movie by the way. De Niro mounts one on a sliding mechanism to conceal in his shirt sleeve so he can quickly deploy it, and it's actually the gun he used in the famous You Talking to Me scene where he draws it in front of a mirror. Anyways, the gun doesn't work. It isn't reliable, accurate, comfortable, or really useful in any way. That said, it sure is a good-looking pistol. Next, we have my semi-automatic Sumi M31, built by TNW. The famous M31 submachine guns from Finland helped this small nation curb stomp the Soviet Union during the Winter War. I've always been a little weary of buying any firearm originally designed to fire from an open bolt being redesigned to fire from a closed bolt due to the added complexity but I went ahead and got the M31 because it's the closest I will probably ever get to a real one. Also, at the time, magazines were cheap, both the stick and drum mags, and I thought it would be a fun little 9mm plinker. I was wrong. The gun is so heavy that holding it up for any period of time is a real chore, especially with a loaded drum. The handling is awkward, and the trigger pull is among the heaviest of any gun that I own, Reliability is also subpar, and I wouldn't ever consider using this gun for anything serious based on that alone. I bought the M31 because of its historical significance and cool factor associated with vintage SMGs, but the lack of reliability, weight, and heavy trigger pull have almost made this a wall hanger. Third, we have the kel PMR-30. Having 30 rounds of 22 WMR on tap is one hell of a selling point, and to be honest, that's what did me in here. However, on the first trip out, the rear sight broke off. So, that sucks. It also was unable to make it through a magazine, which also sucks. Not long after I bought it, there was a recall as well due to issues with keyholing, if I recall correctly, and as some of you know, it's always a pain when your new firearm is recalled. Fast forward and the pistol still won't get through a magazine without some kind of malfunction. Shame too, because this would be a truly spectacular pistol if it functioned properly and didn't chuck parts. As such, I do regret buying it, and I would trade capacity for reliability any day. Up next we have a Generation 1 Masterpiece Arms MPAR. The MPAR is a Charles St. George design that shares a lot in common with the old Leader Dynamics guns. As a result, I thought it would be a real winner, especially at the price point of $535. The gun feels like it was constructed in the most half-assed way possible. Everything wobbles and it feels like it's about to fall apart in your hands. It's also heavy and bulky, and it feels unnatural to shoulder and shoot. This gun fills no hole in my collection really, but I thought for just over $500, a unique 5.56 caliber rifle with a folding stock would be a great knockaround piece. However, the old saying, you get what you pay for, rings true here, and I feel like if I knocked this gun around a bit, it would start shedding parts like crazy. Lastly, we have a gun that is exceptionally well made, but certainly obsolete. This is a Browning BPS 10 gauge that I bought when I didn't know that 3.5 inch 12 gauge magnum shells get the job done all the same, and are exponentially easier to find. When I bought this gun in 2009, I just kind of assumed that 10 gauge was cock of the walk when it came to goose guns. The recoil is harsh as hell, 
but when it's cold out and you're bundled up with a nice heavy thick coat, you don't notice as much as you would think. Of course, with a thin t-shirt, it will leave a nice bruise on your shoulder, but that isn't the point. The BPS shotguns are extremely well-made guns, and both feed and eject from the bottom, which is great for lefties. They are reliable, pointable, and really offer everything I want in a pump shotgun, but I do regret buying a 10-gauge version. 10-gauge shells are expensive as hell, and you can't ever find them in stores. As stated previously, 12-gauge magnum shells are nearly as good and much more prolific. In hindsight, I should have gotten a nice 12-gauge magnum pump, but live and learn, I suppose. So these are five firearms I regret buying. Is there a gun that you have that you wish you never bought? If so, drop a comment below. A special thanks to Ventura Munitions, our ammunition sponsor, for helping us out with the cost of ammunition in our videos. And a big thank you to you all for watching our videos. We sincerely appreciate it, and it would mean a lot to us if you would hit that subscribe button. Until next time.